Hello friends of the T-Woods, Chittering speaking, today with the introduction to programming T-Woods. Uh, so this is a guide for people without any prior knowledge in tech or programming or whatsoever um, on how to create your own um, T-Woods modification. So if you want to code a custom T-Woods client, a custom T-Woods server modification, create your own hex clients, DDoS scripts, aimbots, whatever really things, do not do that by the way, but um, yeah, the skills that I'm about to teach you um, allow you to uh, yeah modify keywords in a way you want so you can uh, contribute to the game and uh, create something awesome cool so uh, in this first episode I'm not going too wild here so we are creating a simple hello world application which is a classical programmer thing to do in a new field and um, we are just printing or greeting the player when he joins the server so this is a the most basic server modification you can do just to as a proof of concept on um, to get started and show you that it's possible and uh, you do not need a lot of brain cells or experience to do anything in the T-Words uh, source code and create some changes. Cool, uh, so there's some prerequisite I have for you guys. Um, you should be able to uh, compile the T-Words source code. So head over to your favorite browser, crack into your favorite search engine, T-Words compiling, and click on videos. I made three videos about this already, um, one for Windows and one for Linux and one for Mac OS. So depending on your operating system, you can pick one of those videos. You only have to watch one. And um, it will guide you through the compiling process. So compiling is transforming the source code that the developers of T-Words have written and um, which is just some text format and uh, transform it into an executable, as you can see in this image here, and create your tworlds.exe, which you can then run. So we are going in this series to edit the source code. So we are changing some text and um, then you need the compiling process once again, so that you have your um, new executable then that has your changes in it. So this is a step zero to do uh, even before changing the source code. Okay, so once you have that set up and downloaded the source code from github.com slash keywords slash keywords, there's this big green button, clone or download. You can download this as a zip archive and unarchive it. Or if you know something about Git, you can git clone it. Um, yeah, so this is not a tutorial about Git and GitHub after all. I will cover this in a future episode. Um, yeah, so do not get intimidated by my system looking different than yours. If you're on Windows, for example, you might be used to uh, Windows file explorers, but this is uh, just some Linux GNOME basic thing. It's just a file explorer. So I downloaded um, the thing from GitHub and this is how it looks like. We you should also have all these files and folders here on your system when you downloaded the um, repository from GitHub. This is the um, directory we are most interested in, the SRC source folder. You can click through it and see there are many subdirectories and here are the source files. Uh, the .h uh, header files, the .cpp, C++ files. Okay, um, so if you double click them, depending on your configuration and system, it might open with a default text editor. In my case, it's opening gedit, the text editor for Linux, uh, let's close that again. Um, your case, maybe in Windows, it's opening it in Notepad uh, editor or in, um, on uh, macOS text edit, whatever. Um, but uh, even though you can use those tools um, to edit the code, which is basically just simple text, um, it's highly recommended to use a specific software to um, edit your source code. I just wanted to let you know that it's just text and you can use any text editor. But in this series, I'm going to use a Visual Studio code and um, or VS Code for short. Uh, so crank into your search engine VS Code and go to code.visualstudio.com. Um, do not confuse this with Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio IDE. So visualstudio.microsoft.com is something you do not want to download. And even Microsoft themselves realized that this tool is so shitty that they advertised Visual Studio Code, so the code.visualstudio.com on visualstudio.microsoft.com. Have I confused you? Wonderful. So uh, in the 
Windows compiling video, I made you download Visual Studio, um, the IDE already, IDE being an integrated development environment, which is much more than just a simple text editor. It seems to run on macOS. It does not run on Linux. Um, I do not recommend this tool for editing the source code. It is possible though. Um, but if you want to follow along step-by-step, step, I um, recommend you downloading Visual Studio uh, VS Code, right? Or Visual Studio Code. Uh, so go to code.visualstudio.com, click on download, go through the installation process, uh, drag it into your applications on macOS and go through the Windows wizard. I believe in you guys that you can download a software uh, on your own. Links will also be in the description, of course. So um, once you have downloaded VS Code, you have downloaded the t source code, um, you should open your file browser and have something similar to me here, right? And the interesting folder, as I said already, is the SRC, the source folder. So go right click it and open it with our other application and select Visual Studio Code. This process should be the same on macOS and Windows. And then we have this text editor open here. On the left hand side, we have uh, the file explorer. And this is, I guess, by default all closed. And um, yeah, so this is the same uh, file structure we had here, just a simple file structure thingy, right? And uh, since we want to do a simple server modification, um, when a client enters, uh, we have to find the file where this happens. I do know by experience which file we have to look in. So um, after time you will collect uh, also some experience and you will gather information on where to look and where to find things. But in the beginning, just follow along and do what I say. And yeah, after, after some time, it all will make more sense. So click into game, click into server and click on gamecontext.cpp. So this is the file that we want to edit today. So uh, we can close this file again. And I want to show you a cool trick that VS Code ships and um, it's advertised down here. Go to file, control P. Um, your text editor, especially if you're using Visual Studio, the IDE, might not be able to do that. Um, if you use VS Code, I just want to show you this handy trick. So press uh, <clears throat> control and uh, P. Then you can type in game con Cheers. game context game context.cpp the file we want to open and you do not have to provide the directories and it will find it no matter where it is and you can also type like a crackhead and type like me and just type gmctxcpp and it will know which file you want to open that's very handy if you can uh, quickly open files then press enter and we are in this file again uh, this is just an alternative for opening files Okay, so, wow, code, uh, confusing. Um, yeah, well, it can look a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, um, but if we look closer, uh, this uh, nobody knows what this all does, but it boils down to English. If you look at this, this whole thing probably sends a emoticon, right? So, um, <coughs> just, Lay back, give it some time, let it sink in, and uh, <clears throat> it will make sense eventually, right? Okay. So, step zero. We want to send a message. I do know by experience again um, that there's a function called send, uh, send chat. So, press Control F for find. That's a <clears throat> widely spread shortcut which also works in VS Code and type in send chat all together and then press enter until you find where do we want to go uh, here so this is the function we want to call uh, game context uh, colon colon send chat int chatter client id and mode into oh what does it do um, okay so uh, this is the function definition you do not know have to know what a function is it's basically a block of code that you can call somewhere else and then it will execute this block of code yeah it's it's magic you will see when it, when we are using it um so let's um do not look at the definition too much we want to see where it's 
uh, called and how it's used. So we can add a parenthesis a opening. And here, wonderful, con say, this is um, the function that gets called when you execute the recon command say. So when you are TWL's server administrator, you have access to this command. Uh, you do not have to know it to follow along and understand something. So the next step, okay, so yeah, I might have skipped over that. So make sure to select this uh, part without the P self in front of it, only send chat and then copy it, control C. Then we want to head to the point in code where a player enters the game. Also by experience, I know it's on client enter. So we search for on client enter and we have this game context function here again. And uh, function, functions contain of two like parts, let's say. You have the function header here with the uh, parameters and um, the body. The body is opened by the squiggly bracket and it's closed by this closing squiggly bracket down here again. Okay, so at the end of this function um, of on client enter, right under the demo recorder stuff here, in between those two squiggly brackets, but before this squiggly bracket, which, which closes the function, so in the function body, we want to paste in our send chat, uh, yeah, function call. So if we hover about, um, above the send chat, VS Code will show us the uh, function um, header again. Oh, was there a different name? I don't know, I might be using a, a non super correct term here, but um, it shows us the argument lists and what those mean. So the first one being the chatter client ID. This is the client ID of the person who is sending this message. Um, you might know TWORLD's client IDs already. If you're uh, a TWORLD's admin and you want to kick someone, you have to provide the client ID. But even if you're a user, I think vanilla clients nowadays show the IDs by default, those numbers in the scoreboard or in chat right uh, before the name. Uh, yeah, so it's a positive number from zero to 63 because there are 64 um, possible slots in, uh, in TWORLD's and uh, starting from zero because programmers start to count from zero, it's uh, zero to 63 being 64 numbers. <laughs> yeah, do not get confused by that. But um, as we can see here, the first argument given is minus one. So what's going on here? This is not a valid client ID. This is uh, <clears throat> the server's client ID, so to say. So this message will not be a chat message with uh, which uh, client send, but it's a mes message coming from the server. So these uh, yellow -y messages with the stars in front, you know what I mean? Um, and the second type, uh, the second uh, parameter being a mode separated by a comma, as you can see here, is chat all. There's also a chat whisper, a chat team and so on, but chat all is just fine. And then the third uh, parameter being two, the recipient. So again, the client ID of the person who is receiving this message. And um, we are going to send this message to everybody for now, okay? So everybody will receive this message when a person joins the game. And the last argument being here, a uh, text. So um, we want to replace the text. So make sure to remove this all here and keep the comma and keep the closing parentheses here. And now we can put in a, a string, like a, a message we want, um, we, we choose, uh, make sure to quote it in double quotes and then write in something like hello. Cool. So make sure it looks exactly like this and you do, did not put this uh, function down here out of, uh, out of the <clears throat> this function call out of the function body or you forgot the semicolon, all those things are important, right? Um, then we want to compile it. Uh, yeah, so I will head into my Linux terminal and do some hackery things. Um, you should already know how to compile things. So you just go there and do your compiling process. You are most likely in Windows, I assume. So go to your Visual Studio and click on the green button and let it compile. Um, I will quickly go through the Linux compiling process here. This is not a, um, 
not a uh, I cannot type and read it uh, and speak at the same time as you may have noticed. This is not a compiling process for Linux after all. So I will <clears throat> quickly go over it. You do not have to follow in this step. Um, okay. So it should also compile for you. As I said, it, the compiling step might be different in your case. And, um, but this process should also show up in Visual Studio and um, you should not get any errors. In, in case you get an error, it looks something like this. Let's produce the error. Um, let's say you forgot this parentheses, or I forgot this parentheses here. And then I run make again to build it. Oh, yikes, something red, error, oh, ah. But um, those error messages might look a little bit intimidating at the first uh, glance, but if you look closer, it tells you what file you are in and then what line you're in. So we're in gamecontext.cpp on line 702 on character 36. And then what the error is there. There's an expected closing parentheses uh, before the semicolon token. And then it even shows the line here and uh, with a arrow where the issue is. Okay, cool. So we head back to the code and even VS Code tells us uh, with this uh, under <coughs> red squiggly line here and this um, message what the issue is here right so it's like a like a spelling mistake uh, like an english error in your word or whatever so it's a uh, it's helping you and then you can close this parentheses again and run make so this is how you debug your errors um, especially in the beginning you might mess up a few details here and there um, make sure you type this out character by character completely the same um, even a single space can mess up any, anything. You can put as many spaces in here as you want. Um, that works just fine as you can see, but you cannot put a space in here, for example. Uh, or can you? Oh, you can. Well, I didn't even know that, but you cannot put a space in here, right? Uh, so over time, you know what, uh, where you can put spaces and where not and so on. Um, so for now, just follow along character by character and all should work fine. Okay, so now that we have built the server, um, we can execute it. Again, in the compiling uh, video, I explained you where to find your output file. In my case, it's in the build directory here. Um, this is my TWAS executable. Um, as you can see, I have the client here and the server here. Uh, on Windows, you have uh, when compiling Visual Studio, your out folder, and there you have uh, your tworlds.exe inside. Um, on Linux, those uh, binaries do not have a exe ending. They just have the name of the <coughs> of the binary. And then we can execute it with dot slash tworlds. This is just Linux specific again. Just double click your exe and um, launch a client. And then we want to launch our, oh my gosh, this is not opening. Uh, uh, yeah. I have to navigate quickly to my thing again. And then we open the server. Okay, so if we go to the client and then we connect to localhost, well, you can also click on play and on local and um, refresh and <coughs> click here or you press F1 to open the local console and type connect localhost. I, I don't know, I like to do that. And as you can see down here, you see it on the left in the chat. We have our hello message. We did it. We are elite programmers now. Oh my gosh. So it's uh, that simple to write a message here. And um, now every time a player joins, everybody will receive this message. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not a useful thing to make, but uh, we did it. Cool. So um, let's go back to the code and uh, change it a bit. Play around with it. Um, we can make a lot of axes in here. And the cool thing about uh, VS Code is you can have your cursor in a line and without selecting something, you can press Control C and then Control V and paste the whole line. So we can produce a big block of things. I know, maybe a useful shortcut sometimes if you want to be very loud. There's also another method um, or function we can call. It's a dbg underscore msg, which stands for debug message. Do not forget the semicolon at the end. And uh, it takes two arguments. The first one being like the, 
<coughs> the console uh, debug type, whatever. So we call in my modification, right? And then the second argument separated with a semicolon, um, <coughs> a message. Also, you have this uh, nice VS Code uh, information here. And we can type in hello world. And then we can compile it again. And run the server again. And run the client again. Okay, so now as you can see, we have a lot of access on here. Isn't that cool? Um, and where did the hello world go? It's uh, not in the chat. Since it's a debug message, it's not a chat message. And if you look into our server console, we can see my modification, hello world. Okay, so this is when you want to print something out just in the server console, um, might come in handy later on. Just wanted to show you that, hello world, it's just about printing text here. And uh, let's print another text. Um, you might know the broadcast function, so search for broadcast. Con broadcast again being the admin command that the admin uses to send a broadcast message. We can copy that and then go to on client enter again and, and put it in here as well. And we again replace the string. If you hover over it, you can see the arguments. The first being the text message, the second the receiving client. So we put in here hello cruel world um, and I might have <clears throat> some typos in there but uh, bear with me here <laughs> and yeah so the the receiving um, client we are going to change that from minus one like we do not want to send that to all players but we can specify a specific player in here and we have the client ID of the player who just joined, which is client ID. So if we put in here, just to be a little bit spacey here and make something different, client ID. So what happens now is this chat message will be sent to every player on the server because we have the third argument, the two recipient minus one. So those are arriving at all clients. This is only showing up in the server log and this broadcast is only shown to the player who just joined the game and other players won't see it. Okay, so let's see if that worked. Um, we go back and close the server, pressing Control C on, um, on Linux, but yeah, this is not a Linux tutorial. Then we recompile it. Me pressing make here is just always your recompiling step, right? And then executing the server again. Oops, I messed that one up. And then we connect again. And you see down here, hello, cruel world. And uh, so we have three different text outputs um, we, uh, we did today. Um, I hope you have learned something and you have lost some fear of touching uh, the C -words, uh, the T world's code. Um, I hope I will get to making more videos about this. Feel free to request a specific topic about a specific T words change you want to make. Um, tell me your plans uh, of T words coding that um, your dreams that uh, you want me to fulfill and show you uh, and guide you in the right direction. Okay, um, that's it for for this week's episode of T words coding. See you.